I want to talk to you about data validation for the cells. Now, we've learned an event that allows you to basically see when something changes, but you cannot control that change from happening, and you can't cancel it from happening and revert back to the old value if you didn't like what just happened. For example, let's say that we wanted them to be able to edit these bonus fields, but we put a limit or a cap on it. Now, if the value that they typed or calculated to in the bonus field is greater than or equal to a thousand, we might say, hey, listen, you cannot exceed a bonus of a thousand. And then we would want to revert back to whatever it was before they tried to make that change. Well, you couldn't do that with the change event. You'd have to use the validate value event. Now, the validate value event doesn't really work until you essentially turn it on or flip on the switch, so to speak. There's a couple ways to enable it. You can manually do it by clicking on design mode and then clicking on the grid, going to right click, go to properties, and then you need to go to the cause validate value. It's this one right here. By default, there has no validate event to fire, so it doesn't even it ignores that event. But if you click on if you go to negative one uh, or EX validate cell, then it would validate the cells. But as you probably remember, if you have a grid on a worksheet, all these different properties that you set up, if you close and then reopen the workbook, these kind of reset themselves. So that's why if you have it on a worksheet, I would prefer that you programmatically do that, even if it's just in a macro that you want to run whenever you start the workbook or something. So we'll do a sub called enable validation. And all you have to do is you're going to say sheet two dot grid one dot cause validate value equals and then we're going to choose not no validate but the validate cell and that will turn on validation for each cell and what that means is we can now use the grid one and we're going to use the let's scroll down to the V section V for validate value so now we can use this event instead of the change event and we can actually control whether or not the change occurs. What I mean by that is, if you'll look with me, there is not only the item, there's not only the column index, and also the new value, but there's a new fourth parameter, which is cancel. And the cancel is going to be either true or false, because it's Boolean. Cancel, if you turn cancel to be true, that means you're telling it, I don't want to allow or accept these new changes. So we can utilize that to our advantage. Let's do something really simple. I'm going to say if the column index is whatever it is for the bonus, so let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3. I know that's confusing because I rearrange these, but if the column index is 3 for bonus, so if column index equals 3, meaning the bonus, and we, remember we have the new value that they're trying to set it to. Yeah, new value is what that's called. So if if they're trying to, if they're affecting the bonus column and the new value for that bonus is going to be greater than or equal to 1,000, then, and I'm going to hit tab and do a message box. So we'll do a message box that says bonus can't exceed 1,000, something like that, okay? And then end quote. And maybe I'll do comma and I'll do a VB critical, like, oh, an exclamation mark type message box, okay? And then uh, that should be good. Let's hit enter, and then now here's the most important part. I'm going to say cancel equals true, because remember, this validate value uh, feature has the ability to tell you to cancel the change, which the change event simply doesn't have that ability. And then we're going to say end if. Honestly, I think that should do it. We've, we've specified that we only care if it's the bonus column that's just been triggered. And we only also care if the new value that they are proposing to enter into that field is greater than or equal to 1,000. That's the only time this message would run. And it's the only time that the cancel equals true. The only time that would happen is if these things are in order. So let's actually try this out. I'm not sure if the grid one change is going to screw that up. We're going to try it out really quick. So if I click here and I just say plus 100 and hit enter, nothing wrong with that. 387 is fine. What if I just flat out typed in 
2000 and tried to click away. Okay, so we forgot one critical thing. I wrote out a macro to enable validation, but guess what? I didn't actually run it. So let's hit F5. All right, now if I go here and type in 100, that's fine. But if I type in a 2000 and hit enter, it'll give us this nice little error message. It says bonus can't exceed 1000. If I hit OK, um, it actually isn't going to revert back to the previous number. In fact, I'm going to be stuck in this cell until I manually click here and change the number itself. So I'm going to go ahead and change it back to 100. Let me show you the other thing that we can do in order to make it revert back. So let's go back to our event here, which is our validate value event. So not only does cancel equal true, but we're also going to want to use the discard validate value method. So that is actually a grid wide method. So what we need to do is we need to say sheet uh, two dot grid one dot discard validate value. Okay, that method of the grid knows that it's going to discard whatever the validate value was. So that'll actually revert it back to whatever it used to be. In this case, we're going to go from 100 to try to do 2000, and then we're going to cancel the change and we're going to discard the value so that it should be free of this loop. Let's try that out. So I have 100 here. I'm going to type in 2000 and hit enter. It will give me this annoying message, but as soon as I kind of hover around and give it like half a second, it has reverted and we are not trapped in that loop. We're actually free from that cell. So that is how to use some validation techniques. Hopefully that's helpful to you. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with this grid. It's just unimaginable. Uh, the additions that you know 20 or 30 years of this control has been being created and and fine-tuned so we'll keep showing you more and more amazing things you can do so stick with us we'll see you in the next lecture